telling you when you, I was like, when he said, you sang that little song, I was, I literally stood straight up with my arms over my head, fists over there, you know, and going, yes, <laughs> that oh, is man. awesome. It doesn't sound anything like I had in my mind, but well, I didn't know wonderful. what the tune was. I only had the lyrics, so I had to make up a tune. It was yeah. perfect. It was awesome. I'm like, I'm not touching that. I'm leaving it. <laughs> the love he felt from the source guiding him was overwhelming. But he now saw the quantum frequency coming through him. He would never forget how it imprinted on his mind that it had the lovings for him. He sent out thoughts to them all that were helping him, wherever they were. During my fall into doubt and fear I will put myself in the eye of the storms I will know it I will feel it your love and guidance are there He realised that it had always been and always would be his choice how he saw himself Ishkia Page how are you? I'm doing awesome thank you Well you're sounding good you're looking good <laughs> And look at this, we've done another audio book together. We have. It was a ride. Fun ride. It, it was a ride. Now, this one is part two of what's going to be a three-part series, yeah? Uh, it could be, pro it's probably more. Okay, okay. So, um, this is part but at two. Least three. I'm working on the third one now. <laughs> okay. This is part two of the Sleeping Phoenix uh, series, science fiction. We did the first one together, and I don't know if I asked this last time. What attracts you to science fiction? You know, it's funny because I'm not really a science fiction geek. <laughs> no, okay. I am not. That's the kind. That's kind of the funny thing about it. And honestly, the book is such a mix of science fiction and fantasy and time travel and all that kind of stuff. It's hard to categorize. And, but what is, what attracts me to the science fiction part is all the research I've done over the years uh, and work in the healthy wellness category. And it saved my life and, um, so body science is absolutely a body emotional whole well-being kind of science is totally up my alley so it's just kind of a mixed thing so what was it you learned that saved your life um <laughs> my you know it, it's it's I mean, for years I worked in the, in a wellness center. So I learned a lot about, um, you know, health. And I think we went over this before this part of it, before a lot of health alternatives and things like that, getting out of the whole, uh, taking drugs for symptoms kind of thing, getting out of that kind of thing. Cause it about killed me. And <laughs> so, but it was after that, once I had that background i got I started getting into um attitude moods emotions um depression uh all kinds of stuff because i was on a deathbed and i think we talked about that before but what i realized um sitting in a recliner was you know i can eat healthy like I have for 20 and 29, 28 years. And if my attitude is bad, it's not going to make any difference because it's going to bring my frequency down and it's going to cause my body stress and it's going to do all kinds of things that I don't want it to do. <laughs> so, um, that started another ball and that's why I've incorporated so much about frequency. Yes. It's actually the base alchemy of the magic in this book, in these books. And what is, now I don't want to spoil the book, you see, so I want to talk about the book, but I don't want to give too much away. What is 
Nagodara? Because that's the title Nagod of the book. What is it? The Nagodara is a species that is in this book that Zreus runs into <laughs> that is quite the opponent. Nasty. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> really nasty <laughs> you know and its whole background comes from something even just hor horrendous but you know it's what we do to ourselves too so well i don't know why we would be so surprised at something so nasty but it is nasty it is really nasty <laughs> and where does the influence come from is the, is there a a nasty thing in your life you've battled with and this thing has the same kind of characteristics? Well, this is kind of a spoiler, but not too much of a spoiler on as far as the story is concerned and all this kind of stuff. But um, Nagadara actually refers to something that is in within our body in certain situ situ situations. So, um, you know, it's, it's, and then it's just kind of what we do to ourselves. So yeah. it, what it creates. All right. So you mentioned, the, you mentioned spoilers and we're not going to spoil which character it is, but I was shocked reading this one that one of the main characters, we lose them. Was that a hard decision to let them go? Oh, it was so hard. <laughs> was it? Oh, my gosh. I'm sitting there typing away, you know, because, you know, I had this rule. And I may have mentioned it last time, but I can't remember. I had this rule. Whatever story I channel in, it goes. Now, I can edit it. I can rearrange it. I can enhance it or whatever, but I cannot deviate. That was my rule in the beginning. Whatever comes in, comes in. So, it's like typing away. And the next thing you know, I'm like, oh, no way. <laughs> no way. I'm like sitting here yelling at myself. No way. I'm like hoping the neighbors not, you know, it's like, <laughs> and I actually had to stand up and go take a walk. I mean, immediately I just went right out the door. I'm not even sure if I locked my door in. <laughs> I just, I, ha I was like, I cannot believe this. And I love that character, but uh, I worked with it. <laughs> okay, cause that, that's, that's a character in the second book. Now I know we're jumping ahead a little here, but you, you you did you mentioned that you're working on the third book, and in the third book, you kill a character, and this, I've seen from your Twitter posts, this caused a little bit of confusion. Can you just tell us what happened there when an innocent bystander thought you were something you weren't? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was talking to a friend that's always wanting to... <laughs> <laughs> stay up on what I'm doing, even though even, it, it's kind of funny because they never read my books. Oh, they're really? Totally interested in this journey, right? That that's the, a lot of people do that. I mean, that's just the way it, it's. It's just something an author has to get used to. Almost everybody they know and love will hardly ever read their books. <laughs> Some will, but most of them don't. You know, it's just whatever so anyway but this friend of mine is totally interested in the book and, and what i'm doing and um my new adventure with the narrating and all that kind of stuff so anyway she, we're talking about it and, and she said i was like oh i had to kill a character so, so this is on the phone we should say this is on a phone you're telling her yes this is on yeah phone. <laughs> and, and where are you at the time <clears throat> i'm actually standing outside a grocery store Right. Because I was and, going to the grocery And can store. you remember the exact words you used to her when you explained what you'd done? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I said exactly, and I quote, 
I really hated it. I really, I actually really struggled with it, but I had to kill her. <laughs> okay. Now there's somebody overhears this conversation. <laughs> exactly what happened too. <laughs> and the reaction? She, <laughs> she, she actually, literally her whole body, I felt for her actually because <laughs> she literally shook and jolted and turned <laughs> and you know she just started ranting about and my, my twitter post had to paraphrase because she was just like going a mile a minute going i'm calling 911 <laughs> you know <laughs> so she 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 dials 911 and she really gets them on the phone she starts reporting to them that this lady just said that she was murdering. <laughs> and I said, I'm an author. <laughs> Apparently they heard it. Right. Yeah. You know, the 911 officials heard it. Heard you and shouting. Said, I'm, I'm an author. author. Right. I just, I didn't shout or anything. I just said, I'm an author. I'm talking about my third book. <laughs> I just, you stay away from me. I'll never forget it. You stay away from me. <laughs> wow. Well, did she understand in the end what had gone on? Actually, no, she just walked away. That I just couldn't believe it. It was just like, you stay away from me. I was like, are you okay? Because I did ask her. I said, are you okay? And I was like, I really am an author. I can prove it to you. <laughs> you stay away from me. Great. And she wow. let, you know, she walked. I don't know if she was kind of embarrassed or what, but yeah, it was. Yeah, don't don't talk about killing people. <laughs> that'll be a great line in a sitcom. You want to see if you can sell that little idea to someone. Oh Stick it in the Big God. Bang Theory or I don't know, something like that. I think that'd work really well. <laughs> Wow. It was kind of surreal, but the, my friend on the phone was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I said, did you, you heard that shit? <laughs> <laughs> so your she friend on the heard phone heard word. the whole thing. She heard the 911 call and everything, your friend on the phone. Wow. Oh, she, the lady was yelling, so it was not hard to hear. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I love the characters in this series. Uh, my favorite, you mentioned him earlier, is Reyes. I just love how he's, the journey that he's going on, how he is becoming more aware of who he is as, as, as much as anything. That My favorite characters are in this order. Reyes is, is way out in front, followed by Rom. I, I like Rom is almost, because he's so understated and he's such a wise old sage, I kind of, I like him. And then I like Rutu. So where does the inspiration for the characters come from in your stories? Because I feel like I know them. I think, I mean, everybody that we come in contact with in life is, is becomes part of who we are. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, I, I just think, um, the main inf it's kind of hard to say the main you know one influence on each of them because I, I can't really say that because it's a conglomeration of of what i channel in versus what i know as myself and what i've learned from others and that kind of stuff so it's it's kind of hard to say i don't have a particular linear kind of thing and to tell you the truth we had a conversation i had a conversation with another author he's actually a best-selling author but he does crime mysteries and we were talking about um plotting versus in, in there it is has to do with it but anyway uh plotting versus pantsing and we talked about you know uh, 
how we both tried to plot and all this kind of stuff, which brings me to the stories because I, in the beginning, I tried to plan all these characters and I just couldn't. I, it was kind of weird because the kind of story this was going to be was mixed genres. I mean, because it has, I mean, it's science fiction, it's fantasy, it's a uh, mystery thriller uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of hard to really categorize. <clears throat> but because this was so different, it was really hard to put together the characters for me. So for two and a half months, I tried. And finally, I said, oh, screw this, you know, I'm just gonna name them. And a certain tr job they're doing in the beginning of the book. And as I wrote, I got to know them. Okay. The okay. So they came to I, life as you started writing them. Yeah. The only thing I gave them was a basic human design, you know, right. internal design of what tool sets they had, um, that kind of stuff. And then other than that, I didn't know them at all. Right. So you other got to know them as you wrote them. I did. I did. And a lot of them have secrets that have yet to come out <laughs> and, you know, mistakes they've made. And then there'll be a lot of shocks, you know, but, um, yeah, it's kind of fun because I'm like, Oh, really? <laughs> but one of the things I like about it is there's a lot going on and a lot happens but you don't rush it. It's, it's at a really, really nice pace so that you can just follow it and you go, okay, okay. And then you add another thing and then you add another thing and then it goes over here. And, you know, it's taking place in a, in a couple of different dimensions. I mean, totally different dimensions. And I don't know how you get your head around that, but I like the way that you haven't tried to just cram it all in and throw it at the listener and the listener's brain's trying to, you go bump, bump. Bomb. It just it's just really nice was that deliberate yes yeah it was yeah i really like that about it yeah it, yeah because <clears throat> i've read books where it's all plot yeah and i finished the books but i don't remember them <laughs> and then yeah. i've read books <clears throat> where to the other opposite extreme where there's so much descri <laughs> description you want to yawn all the way through it um but yet it was still rich and i still remembered those books because of the richness of the characters yeah so i didn't want either extreme though right but i wanted to, the users to have an experience yeah because of the layers you know, yeah. because it is, you know, it is adapting science, real science and science fiction of it's mainly, especially for the body and the emotions and the awareness. Um, uh, but it is integrating science with, um, with the story. <clears throat> but if I was to sit here and give you a five minute talk on everything I've learned in the past 30 years, you would, your eyes would probably glaze over because unless you've been down the same path, because it's like, you won't get it yeah. much less apply it. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting though. Yesterday I received a friend request on Facebook and, um, they were really surprised that I, accepted their friend friend request and then they ended up doing a post about how that first book uh changed their life wow and i was like what and um this is kind of what i was really after but you know it depends on somebody's awareness as to where they whether they get things or not you know what they're ready for and they'll get to tidbits and you know, no matter what kind of awareness you have on that kind of those kinds of subjects. But she wrote this big, long thing about how, you know, she was always angry. Sounds like Zareus, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
exactly the same it. journey yeah she was you know she was always angry and she couldn't go out of her house and she was really having a lot of depression issues and uh she was basic it basically disabled her and she told this story about getting this book by accident now go figure she talked about getting the book by accident she started she read she got another book but this one came instead so her neighbor told her, you know, sometimes those accents are something that we're supposed to to have. And she talked about how the cover kind of drew her in. Of the first book? Of the first book. Yeah. And then her brother told, she, her brother follows me on Twitter. Right. And he, her brother told her about two coming out. So she, she read the first book. She said she forgot how many times she read it through. And she picked up the second book and she, it was like, she got it. You know, she got something for her. Yeah. And she said, now she knows how to process her anger. Wow. So wow. I was like, you know, wow, that's kind of, that's what, that's what I was hoping for. So it makes the, that this whole series and what we've been doing with this, these books have totally been worth it our group effort here you know no, you you're, you're the one that created them you i no, mean no, no, no. It's, it's all everything you are actually part of book two even before you narrated it because we had been working together and it's all frequency you've added to my <laughs> tool set you um helped me write it better because i listened to you so writing something for a reader is different than writing something to be narrated. Yes. So when I wrote book two, I wrote it. I heard you. <laughs> you, I heard you narrating it. It was really, it was really fun. And it's like, no, I got to change this habit here, you know, because this won't sound, it was, um, the first time I noticed the, the, the changes was on an interruption. Somebody would say something and the other person would interrupt. Yeah. So I in, in, you know, initially put a tag in front of it, such and such interrupted and said, whatever, you know, yeah. I don't know if that was exactly how I worded it, but you know, yeah. And I was like, no, uh, uh-uh. Nope. I went ahead and had the interruption first. And then whatever I needed afterwards to tag who it was for the action or whatever. So you have made me a better writer just by listening to you. Sure. I actually took the initiative to do it. Sure. But you added to this book in more ways than you know. Um, So I appreciate that. It's, it's a group effort. It's, it's something that you added you as a person and and your talents and your environment have totally added to the experience of book two without thank you without thank you very much i didn't even realize that but thank you i'm just doing what it takes to make the book come alive but you know you you gave me quite a few challenges um towards the tail end of the first book and in this book because one of the characters and i I always do character voices. I don't read them straight. I, I act out the characters as the characters. And one of them, which is Reyes, you have him shrink. And you said to me, <laughs> you wanted him to sound like Shreyas, but you, Reyes, but you wanted him to sound small. So I found a, an effect in the recording software I use, and I managed to pitch up his voice to a slightly higher pitch. And I think we tried a few different ones, didn't we, until we got the pitch where you liked it. Uh, but it doesn't speed him up. It's it's like the pitch has increased when you speed something up, except it's at the same speed, but it's at the pitch of if it's gone up. I can't remember now. Is it half a semitone it's gone up? I don't know. And it just makes him sound small. Yeah, so we've got that going on. And I always do that, and I have an effect that makes it sound like something is over a... A small speaker. It's often good for radio or telephone. Yeah. 
Is there, oh, it's an echo we want for thoughts yeah, and like stuff. A, yeah, you know, Aquam and his echo and and yeah, tap. that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. The the uh, the spaceship has a conscience, or it's a it's a it's an artificial intelligence. It has, and so when that talks, you have to know that that is what. Because I always think, you know, for an audio book, you've got to know who's speaking. Even though at the end it'll say Sedz Reyes or whatever, you don't get that often till the end. You have to know who's speaking when they speak. So I. Uh, so it was. It, it makes it more fun, I think. I mean, um, we haven't. Had, have we had singing in this one? Yes. Oh, we yes. did have singing. <laughs> oh, I can't remember was this one or the first one whether there was singing in it. It was the second was one. Yeah, right. it was awesome. <laughs> you should have seen. I'm telling you, when you, I was like, when he said you sang that little song, I was, I literally stood straight out with my arms over my head, fists over there, you know, <laughs> and going, yes. <laughs> That is awesome. It doesn't sound anything like I had in my mind. But well, I didn't know perfect. what the tune was. I only had the lyrics. So I had to make up a tune. It was so. perfect. It was awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not touching that. I'm leaving it. <laughs> now, when we spoke uh, last time, hello, can you still hook? Uh, I just I, I leaned on my thing. I, I lost myself. No, I when, can we hear spoke, you. when we spoke last time, you mentioned that you have some physical challenges that makes typing tricky. How how do you get around that then? You got problems with your with your hands, joints or something and, and you can't type for long periods of time. What do you do? Good question. You know, I I kind of work with it so much that I don't really think about it too much anymore. I mean, it's there. I I notice it every day you know, all the time. But I, what I do is, is I, I'll do a sprint. I'll set a timer for 25 minutes. And then I'll type, you know, like if I'm draft when I'm drafting. So I'll type and I draft. And then when the timer goes off for five minutes, I'll get up and go do something. Um, whatever it is I need to do to give my hands a rest and, uh, you know, take a, take something or not necessarily, I don't, I'm not on pain meds or anything like that, but, um, drink, get an extra, get water, whatever. And then I'll rub my hands with a special, um, home remedy, um, salve that I use on them to increase, uh, circulation without, and decrease inflammation. So <clears throat> I'll rub that on every time and then I'll set another timer for 25 minutes and rinse and repeat for, you know, maybe two to three hours at a time. Well, it's having that, I'll call it a disability. I don't know whether that's too strong a word to describe it, but anyway, but having that condition anyway, I think at the very beginning it actually helped you and I get this thing started because we communicate through WhatsApp during the book. And when we were setting up the first book, you sent a voice message. And of course, I hadn't heard you speak. I'd only seen it in text. And uh, you sent a voice message. And, and we were, at the time, I think we were only working out the characters or I don't even know if we'd actually done the deal to start the book. Anyway, you sent a voice message because you said typing too much, it's, 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 too, it's too difficult for you to type a lot. And you, you sent a voice message that ran for about, it feels like 10 minutes, probably only five minutes. Could have been three minutes. I don't know. And I heard you and I thought, this lady sounds like she's going to be fun to work with. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that, was, that was one of the main things that had me go yeah let's let's make this happen and then we went ahead and we did it and um before i'd even narrated a line of dialogue or anything we worked out all the characters first and we went back and forth and you said no this one needs to be a bit like this and this one needs to be like yeah, we this. we set up a great stuff. library it was just perfect for me yeah well i always work like that with a book i always have a uh, a voice bank 
of usually the first line or the second line of the first line is only short of the when the character is first introduced so that if the character goes away and doesn't come back for a few chapters and I kind of forget how that character sounded I can go back to my voice bank and have a listen but I don't always share the author in uh, with that having said that there is a long book I'm doing now and the author's been shared in they want it to be but uh, yours is only the second or maybe third one I've done where the author has been shared in because it was it was so important to get the characters right. And uh, it really was. It wouldn't it have been so a much, very good. It was so much fun, though. And also, I know straight off that, you know, because I have to have the confidence to read it. And I, you know, you've always got that thing. Have I got this character the way this was written or not? Or am I just making this up because it sounds funny and it sounds like someone I know? But I can have the confidence knowing that is Kia signed this one off? This is how they sound. Here we go. And it kind of helps as well. So it's been, it, it's been a really great uh, process. There are, there are a few authors I really enjoy working with. You're one of them. And uh, there are, oh, there are, I mean, yeah. I, I shouldn't say I have my favorites, but you're one of my favorites. You're in the, the top <laughs> echelon there of the ones I like working with. You know, Danielle in Florida is another one who you've, you've communicated with. Yeah, and, she's uh, awesome. Yeah, she's good for. I'm doing one of hers at the minute. Hers, uh, her first three I did with her were science fiction, but the the one she's doing now is a murder mystery. Are you thinking of doing some other genres? Is there, or maybe you've done them? Are, are you working in other areas, or, or staying with the science fiction? Um, right now I have eyes only for this series. Okay, it's pretty intense. Ever- it is. It's so. Mi- I mean, it is. It's epic. It's mm. not just a, a very linear series. It's. It's as you know. It, it's very multi leveled. Yeah, and but don't let that frighten so- you. If you th- if you're thinking of getting the book, you, you won't lose your way because the pacing that IKEA uh, Ishkia takes you through. IKEA. <laughs> I called you furniture. <laughs> <show. laughs> Ishkia, Ishkia takes you through the. Through it step by step by step, you don't lose your way and get confused, which you could do. With the, it, there's that much going on, but Ishkia doesn't let you do that. She takes you, holds your hand, and takes you through the story. I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, that's fine. It, it's perfect because that that's always my my fear is when I write is that it will get overwhelming. And it's kind of funny because I can't tell you how many times editors have told me, just stay with the, just stay with the plot. Just stay with the plot. This, this has nothing, this has, I don't know how many times I've heard, this has nothing to do with the plot, but they don't know it does. (laughs) But it develops the characters more. So you care about them because you know them better. You know, I've never read a book that stayed on plot that I remember it. I, I don't I, rem, I don't even remember the plot, but the, all the books I loved the most, it was when the characters were so rich, they lived. Yeah. And I want that for my readers. Yeah. Well, you get that. As a reader, <laughs> you definitely yeah. get that. And and what about the artwork? Cuz cuz this one's this one's interesting. If I move if I move this way a little bit off mic, I can give myself a spiky hairdo, I think. Let's see. <laughs> where, where, where does where does the artwork come from? Here. Really? <laughs> so do you draw it? Wow, I know, how come I never knew that? I guess you just never asked. I suppose. So The background is actually literal watercolor. Yeah. Because I'm a watercolor artist. Yeah. And um, I get the feel of what's going on in the book, both energetically and science-wise. And I kind of make something kind of... You know, they say, you know, to put an actual person on a cover so that humans can relate to it. Right. Yeah, I get that. I understand that. Yeah, that makes sense. I get it, but I can't, I don't want to do that at the same time. 
because yeah. I don't want to ruin somebody's visualization when they read. Oh, of course, yes. You you they you want their pictures to be better than yours, and you, and exactly. they're their pictures. Yes, yeah, same as radio. Yeah, their yes, um, their perspective is the most valid one, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. The reader's perspective is the most valid. Yeah. I don't want to lead them to think. This is exactly how this character looks. Yeah. Um, and and I want a place for fan art. You know, I want them to do their art based on description and how yeah. they interpret it. So while the first one kind of has a person on it, but they're kind of particleizing out, yeah. you know, you never see their face. Yeah. And uh, the second one has, uh, you know, a red eye. You would know who, why, you know, what that might represent. And the allurement of that red eye. You know, it's not just a red eye. But it's sexy. You know, the eye is kind of sexy. And that's allurement, you know, kind of thing. Um, But uh, your hair, you know, the one you just made from the picture or whatever. um, Yeah. The, that's like what happens from that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of a very impressionistic kind of thing. Oh, it's great. The whole thing is great. The whole package is great. The whole series is great. This one is called Nagadora, the Sleeping Phoenix Part 2. The first one is Sleeping Phoenix Part 1. And the title of that one is Kia? Fractured. Fractured, which is Sleeping Phoenix Part one, even though in part one, I don't think you understand what Sleeping Phoenix is, do you? Until part two, it makes it all kind of slots in and you go, oh, I get the Sleeping Phoenix now. Am I right? Yeah. It, y- yeah. it takes three books to understand the base of the, of the series. Yeah. But it's a terrific series. It's it's lovely. It's got some great characters. And another good thing about it, it doesn't have too many characters. It has just the right amount. I mean, I've narrated books, series of books with over a hundred characters and you do kind of lose track uh, as, as who's who. You have to be, or I have to be reminded when I'm reading them to go back to my voice bank and go, who is this guy? But yours, not necessarily, even though we worked really hard on the voice bank before we even started. They, uh, they They're now... They're now friends of mine, and when well, friends of mine, I feel like the characters are friends of mine. And when we go and do the next one, like when we did the second one, and I get this with other people's books too, it's not as yours. Um, it's like, oh, great! It's like a reunion of some of my favorite people. Yeah. I bet that yeah. is. I it bet really that's is, really cool. um, because I get so close to them and care about them, and that's why it's so sad when you kill them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well. But, yeah. you know, hey, sometimes <laughs> things are deceiving. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Ishkia, continued success. We get the book. We get it from, it's on Audible. It's on iTunes, if it's still called that anymore. It's on Amazon. It's on Google Play. It's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You're not limited to Audible. You're not, you know, it's everywhere. Wherever so check you it get audio books. And if you want to get it for free and you sign up for a, a free trial to, I think it's a one month trial you can get at Audible. If you sign up for that, I'll put the link in the, well, that's my website address, but in the blurb, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, in the blurb there, there's a link to uh, how you can sign up for a free trial of Audible, which will give you, um, yeah, get the, get the two of them. Uh, you can download them and, uh, and you're all set. Ishkia Page, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much and continued success. It's such an honor to to work with you. Thank you so much. It's always fun.